I'll be with you in a minute when I've got my order of service. And then I drop it. Good morning. And welcome. There we go. Welcome. Lovely to be here on this misty morning. Um, Sally. Oh. So, just tell you just two notices. And that is that next Sunday, the 9.30 service will be at St. Dennis in Chilworth. And on Tuesday morning, there'll be morning prayer at St. Mark's in St. Mark room at 10.30. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn is number 352. 352. As <coughs> is Lord, yet and Lord, no for by his power each trace power was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe as its sun, moon, and stars in heaven. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise him with the new years, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, from his throne eternal, in flesh he died in Calvary's tree. Jesus is Lord, from him all life proceeding, yet give him life as none, that's setting us free. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise him with hallelujahs, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Sin to conquer from the throne and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord, his Holy Spirit to show that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. And so we come to the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful Father, we, we confess that, that we, we have sinned, sinned against you and, and against, against one another, another in thought and word and deed. We, we are, are truly sorry for our pride and for our, for our lack of faith, of understanding, understanding and, and of love. We, we repent of our narrative mindedness, of our, our bitterness and, and our prejudices. Pardon and, and forgive us, save us and, and renew us, that, that we, we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you, 
free you from your sins and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Assured of God's forgiveness, we say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the second Sunday after Epiphany. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please sit for the readings? The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 62, verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and in your land shall be married for as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Spiritual Gifts. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, 
to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Here they, they there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? Standing there with were six stone water jars from the Jew, for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it and did not know. where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please sit. <clears throat> A visiting aunt asked her young nephew if he attended Sunday school. When he, says he, when he said he did, she asked, what are you learning? Last week, said the boy, our lesson was about when Jesus went to a wedding and made water into wine. And what did you learn from that story, his aunt inquired. After thinking for a moment, the boy answered, if you're having a wedding, make sure Jesus is there. <laughs> Profound advice. It is indeed a good thing to have Jesus at our wedding ceremonies and in our lives. Our gospel reading tells of a wedding in Cana, which was attended by both Jesus and his mother, at which the wine runs out, no doubt to the host's great embarrassment. Mary asks Jesus to do something about it, and he does. The reading ends with the words, this, the first of his, mirac of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. John's Gospel often speaks about signs and about faith. Signs, as we know, point to something. And in this context, those with eyes to see realize that this is something greater than they are. 
And it is that greater thing that we are meant to grasp and not simply the sign itself. This first sign that Jesus did points to many things about him and what he was about. Turning water into wine is in itself a picture of all that he came to do. Jesus takes what is and shows us that it has the possibility to become something else. That which is tired, worn out, devoid of joy, empty, or lacking purpose, can be transformed. It can be turned into something rich, fragrant, and ripe with the fullness of joy through his presence and through his care. This is good news for us. Jesus can bring new life. He can fill the emptiness in our lives. He can take whatever it is that we bring to him, no matter how little or how much, and utterly remake it, giving to it savor, a taste that is beyond the best that we ourselves are capable of providing. Note too that the wine came from the huge 30-gallon jugs that stood full of water at the front of the house, vessels that were used by observant Jews to fulfill the rules of ceremonial washing. Jesus transformed those six jars, ponderous symbols of the old way, into harbingers of the new. From the purified water of the Pharisees came the choice new wine of a whole new era. The time for ritual cleansing had passed. The time for celebration had begun. The story also emphasizes the abundance of Jesus' provision of wine. The wedding guests went from having no wine to having almost enough to swim in. This miracle is thus a sign of the Messiahship of Jesus, an age long expected to be one of abundance, one in which the wine of joy and the cup of salvation would always be full and overflowing. The miracle taking place at a wedding is significant in that marriage had long been a symbol of the relationship between God and his people. The fact that the first sign that Jesus did was at a wedding would not have been lost on the people. It was their belief that at the time of salvation, God would provide a table for feasting for his servants and a cup that would never run dry. This imagery is in fact present in that much-loved 23rd Psalm of David, whose final verse says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Jesus also seems to stress here the place of his mother Mary in the work of redemption. It is Mary who triggers Jesus' first act of public ministry, saying to him, they have no wine. It's a simple statement that shows her trust in her son and his ability to help. Notably, the only other place where Jesus calls his mother woman is at the Passion, as she stood beneath the cross when he handed her over to the care of John and made her the mother of us all. 
I believe that first sign that Jesus did, among other things, is a preview of the Last Supper. The hour when Jesus transformed not water into wine, but wine into blood. His blood shed for us all. The wine of salvation, a salvation won for us completely by Jesus when he gave up his life for us. A salvation that is not just for a day or the week during which a wedding was celebrated, but forever. Mary tells the servants in today's reading to do whatever he tells you. That is what faith is about. Responding to the words of Jesus, trusting that his word will be fulfilled, trusting that as he transformed the water of purification into the wine of joy, so he will transform us and lead us into the kingdom where the best is not only saved for the last, but where the best lasts. And as we receive communion this morning, let us open our lives anew to God, his gifts of grace. The best is yet to come. The glory of God is at hand. Amen. Please stand as we affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and, and was buried. buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. <coughs> let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. The Magi came from the East to worship your Son. Father, grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration. We pray for those involved in changes to leadership within the Church, thinking of Bishop Tim retiring soon, Bishops Debbie and David taking up the slack, and the very Reverend Stephen Lake appointed the next Bishop of Salisbury. We also pray for those involved in selecting a new vicar. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The infant Christ received gifts of gold, incense and myrrh. Father, accept the offering of our hearts and minds. As the world continues to face a climate crisis, help us to consider our impact on the climate in the day-to-day -day decisions we make. We pray for those areas of the world most affected, thinking of Malawi, Zambia, Niger, and Uganda, and also thinking of those affected by the tsunami in Tonga. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Father, 
grant an abundance of peace to your world. We pray for places where there is ongoing conflict or hardship as a result of it, thinking particularly of Afghanistan, Tigray in Egypt, Yemen, Syria, Kazakhstan and Ukraine. Give wisdom to national leaders and those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The Holy Family lived in exile and in the shadow of death. Father, look in mercy on all who are poor and powerless and all who suffer. We think of refugees across the world, remembering especially those affected by the fire in the Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh and those currently fleeing as a result of ongoing unrest in Burma, Myanmar. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your son shared the life of his home and family at Nazareth. Father, protect in your love our neighbours, our families and this community. We pray for those who suffer from hunger, sickness or loneliness and those who care for them thinking particularly of Roger, Simon, Eileen, Tony, David, Colin, Gary and his wife Sue, and any others known to us. We pray too for those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ, thinking of Audrey Frost and Morris Moody, and any others known to us. Comfort their families in their sorrow and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we rejoice in our fellowship with the shepherds, the angels, the magi, the Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph and all the faithful departed. In your unfailing love for us and for all people, hear and answer our prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. If anyone in Christ is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you, Sally. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church and the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks 
to the Lord our God. All honor and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only son, our Lord. For in this time, we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the king of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the savior sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voice to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. And the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. John, St. Dennis, and Mark, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Lord taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. My page won't turn. It has happened by the grace of God. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
Let us pray. <clears throat> God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we say, Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us ask for God's blessing on us all. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bowed down in worship and offered gifts, reveal to you his glory and pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with those you love and pray for now and always. Amen. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 31. Together we stand. Only through grace are we worthy. Inheritors of the land is dawning. A new age to come when the children are promised. Together as one. Time has come when the children of promise shall together as one. People without recognition will imagine your destiny sealed to a heavenly vision. This purpose shall be fulfilled. Come, let us stand strong together, abandon ourselves to the King. His love shall be ours forever, with every song we shall sing.